Okay, go. Hi, I switched over because we did have a camera um, problem in that our camera person was not here, so we've been doing Where are you, camera person? <laughs> but um, thank you so much for being here, Keith, and Thanks. I just wanted to ask you a couple of things um, about the current climate of our country, because I just recently lost a friend who was homeless, and I think there's been a huge criminalization of poverty in our country, and I was just wondering, what do you think about the environment right now? Has it gotten worse, or do you think it's getting worse? It is definitely getting worse. I think that there is a, a really organized, systematic campaign. There's always been kind of this general campaign since about 85, 86, mm -hmm. but I do see since uh, after Occupy, we started seeing um, a lot of new laws, a lot of new campaigns against the poor and the mm -hmm. homeless, and this kind, and I, it's pretty fascinating that the Obama administration uh, really stepped up their game to try to, to hide poverty in America. Yeah. And it's interesting because he, he's been giving these little speeches about how, uh, almost like pro-occupied 99% speeches, but uh, bringing in even more uh, fascist uh, people into the system. And some of the things that are happening is this whole criminalization of, uh, uh, or like militarization, bringing in like armored personnel carriers mm -hmm. into uh, city police departments all over the country, uh, drones, SWAT teams, and then this rhetoric within the media, uh, um, which is pretty astounding since so many Americans realize that because of the foreclosure crisis and stuff, people have been like in an increasing numbers becoming homeless. So it seems like the response, rather than to alter banking policies, like the Dodd-Frank just lets the banks do whatever they want. It's kind of even made it worse than <coughs> it was already. And then you've got uh, Obama trying to fast track both the Trans-Pacific uh, um, Partnership and, and an Atlantic Partnership uh, trade agreement mm -hmm. that would be wipe out, uh, make it impossible for jobs and so on in this country and increase even more poverty. So their reaction, rather than making it possible for people to get work and stuff like that, is to make health insurance too expensive to buy, making housing impossible to obtain, uh, making it so that you have all kinds of restrictions on getting food, even in the legal uh, soup kitchens and stuff like that. Cities are starting to have it be, they need a state ID, <laughs> stuff like that. Shelters are starting to charge money. Yeah, and I think like that, that people like are kind of confused as to who is food insecure because I, I would be food insecure and then there's people who just don't have any food whatsoever. And I think your organization is really cool. And I did think that the um, Pope's message, if you like read right, a right. little bit about that, I thought that was kind of nice because, you know, I don't think the Catholic Church has been doing that great um, up until recently. But um, I thought that a few was inquisitions nice. here and there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. So. Uh, it's because they, <laughs> among their arsenal, surprise. <laughs> That's right. Um, so have you found that the community in Santa Cruz is any different than um, around the world, or do you feel that um, everybody is kind of the same mold, just a little bit different? Yeah, it's the same mold. It's kind of shocking. You will hear a story about Santa Cruz city government, and you'd actually hear that same, uh, the city councilors in Raleigh, North Carolina, saying the same thing, the same thing in Nashville, North Carolina, or the same thing in Saratoga, Florida, or whatever. Right. It's like really weirdly the same. And what I noticed was that you know, in, in, uh, there's a National Association of, of uh, uh, City Attorneys and the National Association of uh, Environmental Health Inspectors and the International Chief of Police Association. And these people all network. And so what happens with, with the Santa Cruz City Council and the police department, they are introduced to the same strategy. So you see like those little uh, um, parking meters where you put the money in. Mm -hmm. That's all part of the give the hand up, uh, not a hand out campaign. Just, <laughs> and you'll see parking meters like that everywhere. Mm -hmm. Orlando has them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, they're all over America. Mm -hmm. And then you, so you get these patterns that are, the, it's, and it's all through the community oriented policing services mm -hmm. um, unit of the U.S. Justice Department. And they get the, so the, the, uh, the police and the sheriff's department, everybody in Santa Cruz County. They all go to those meetings, and they hurt and these really important things. And then there's these other meetings for the city councilors, and they and and it's all like, oh yeah, we see it's a growthy trend, and we must stop these poverty people from being outside because it's ruining our business, and we can see that. Yeah, it's really disgusting. We've been to the city council meetings, and I left in disgust, and I'm really heard about some of the language. I just recently left a discussion group called like Citizens for a Better Santa Cruz, and it 
just like the discussions they had were so um, shallow and nonsensical, like they take pictures of trash and say, look what the homeless people are doing, as right. if homeless people are the only people that leave trash around, which most of the trash, I would assume, is just flowing out of people's bins and that sort of thing. But yeah. I think that we've started to have kind of a unique hatred and gentrification in Santa Cruz. Maybe not unique, but to this area now, it's a new phenomenon, newer right. phenomenon. But um, I think it's ruining the community in a way because I've used to come down here so much and like have such fun and I think it's really sad what's what's become of Santa Cruz and um, I think you're a really cool part of the historic Santa Cruz but do you think that's something that's going to move forward as far as like the character of Santa Cruz? Well I think that's going to be actually the Food Not Bombs itself in Santa Cruz is kind of going to be more yeah. in a um, you know in front of a uh, basically resistance to what's happening it's going to get more extreme and more serious and I think potentially well eventually the Santa Cruz will uh, you know will probably approach the food not bombs and say oh you can move to this place where there's these <laughs> warehouses someplace where no one's at or something like that maybe you know behind the Costco parking lot or something like that you know they'll come up with some scene and then and people will say no we're actually out here organizing mm -hmm. and uh, and um and, and, and I think it's going, that struggle is going to get more and more intense. So it's not going to drive Santa Cruz food not bombs outside. It'll just make it larger and bigger like the arrest did before. <laughs> and the thing that's very interesting is that there was all, like, over 50, 60 cities were told they had to stop serving food, mm -hmm. and they were giving laws about it and passed all that stuff. Then they went out to tell us to go, and we didn't go. And now I think they're kind of in this weird, freaked out, we need to come up with a a better ad campaign about how evil Food Not Bombs is <laughs> before we can succeed and see the Santa Cruz government is waiting for their uh, cue as to like they'll get this uh, documents and the uh, trainings and all this. Okay, this is what you'll say about uh, Food Not Bombs yeah. and that way you Nonsensical get rid of it. yuppie propaganda, which we get here right. so much. In this I just was reading those documents I was saying before about the Sacramento. That about 30 times in these documents they call these things called bum fires, and it's like they, they, there was no uh, and they and each thing they said well there was a mur there was 36 murders in that part of Sacramento in the last 12 months, and then there's bum fires, but they you know that's like this derogatory word that they're, they're trying to put out this idea like build this story that oh all the fires in California are started by homeless yeah, people. Yeah, it's a negative association because yeah. they do that here too with needles. They say homeless people needles, homeless people needles and I even talked to Robert Norris about that and I said, you know, I have never seen ever one homeless person shoot up. That doesn't mean that there aren't people that do that. But right. you know, again you need money for the drugs, you know, whatever they're shooting up. I'm I'm a pot smoker myself, so I don't know anything about this. But um <laughs> I think that like, obviously, that's one of those things where, you know, if they do say that about Santa Cruz, then they're painting Santa Cruz as this scary place where you're going to get stuck by a needle and run into a pit of trash and have homeless people run after you. But Yeah, no. Silly. And yeah. they are human beings, you know, which I try to um, always remind myself even, but I think a lot of people forget that. And I think that you, like, reaching out with your humanity is really beautiful, and it, it is contagious. Like Colin was saying, it's kind of cool the way it went viral, your idea and stuff. So. Yeah, and, and I think people, I mean, all, these homeless people, many of them are children. You know, uh, I don't know that, I think, it, what is it, it's like 60,000 uh, homeless people in America are college students. Yeah, and my, my friend who died who was homeless was um, a veteran of the Army, and he felt pretty bad about some of the things he had to do, and he was traveling around trying to, you know, kind of have a spiritual journey, and he did make a beautiful video thanking Santa Cruz for um, giving him some peace, so that's really nice. Um, so I will say thank you to everyone for that, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's, and it's a horrible struggle. Why well, take so many of our veterans... Uh, there's huge numbers of vets, uh, and it's just criminal that you come home from these wars and people can't, there's no help really. I mean, I've been hearing a whole series of reports on NPR recently of, of veterans who get uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and and there's just no, um, you know, they, they can't get, if you get less than honorable discharge, you can't get any benefits, and, and all these things, and, and often you're getting less than honorable discharge for really ridiculous things. It's or they'll be injured, like he was injured, and right, you get right. smaller benefits than you should, but right. I think that a lot of people that 
um, in our community that talk about the homeless people. They're the same ones that always say, oh, support the troops, but then most of the homeless people, I think, are vets statistically. Right, right. And so Higher proportion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's at least, it's, uh, some estimate is 50%, it's definitely over a quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, oh, uh, Oprah Winfrey had this amazing uh, thing that she did where she interviewed homeless women. Mm -hmm. And I remember this segment was incredible. This woman was a vet, mm -hmm. and she uh, had just enough money from uh, being honorably discharged that she could rent the cheapest car from rent a -Rec. <laughs> And so what she did is she rented a car, and she got a YMCA membership. Mm -hmm. And so she would just uh, do her makeup in the car and everything, go to all these job interviews and stuff. And she'd been months and months renting this car as her home. I mean, that's outrageous that we have vets that, that have to do that. And, and it's possible for there to be universal health care. It's possible that that people have access to food. It's po you know, there's uh, several forecl empty foreclosed homes for every uh, homeless person in America. Right. So why aren't they being renovated? Instead, when the J.P. Morgan settled uh, its criminal case with the federal government, it was ordered to pay billions of dollars into a fund to destroy housing, which ultimately only benefits the very banks that robbed the people. And, uh, and, and, and you know, it's, there's a, a case going on, a civil case in Massachusetts, where whistleblowers from the banks admit that the Obama administration connected with the banks in the TARP bailout when he first was elected, and part of the pro program was to confiscate as much property from Americans as possible, mm -hmm. and uh, that you were supposed to call the Hope Line. The Hope Line would tell you to stop paying your mortgage for two months right. before we can help you. Then you do that, then your house gets foreclosed on, then you lose the house, and it was a strategy, a national organized strategy. Yeah, they tried to do that to my parents, and luckily they were able to um, write into the Department of the Treasury, and they, after two years of fighting, got to keep this crappy little house that they're buying in Prunedale with their life savings, you know. And, uh -huh. But the whole thing, I know that very well because then they say that they lose your information and it's a total runaround, but yeah. it's a, it's one of the biggest heists of our uh, our times, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's, like in, <laughs> it's uh, hundreds of billions of dollars and uh, millions of Americans are now uh, homeless or renting as a direct result. And, that, and this is criminal. So we're being criminalized, like in, in most parts of the country. You can't sleep outside. You can't hold a cardboard sign outside. You can't sit within so sort of many feet of an automatic teller machine or parking meter. Um, you know, you can't, uh, many cities have laws that you have to have uh, 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 two-thirds of your body horizontal to the earth. <laughs> I mean, you have, like, these crazy laws like that. And, uh, and uh, now shelters are, ca are charging, like... You know, fifteen twenty dollars to spend the night in a shelter on the floor, with no you know no mattress, nothing. It's like crazy, and this whole and people do that because they will be arrested if they're outside. That's right. And so uh, and then now in Florida, for instance, they're charging rent for jail. So when I got oh I God. did nineteen days in jail, it cost me a thousand dollars rent for nineteen days. Wow. Yeah, I went to jail one time, not for a long period of time, but they wouldn't let us make phone calls, <coughs> and they were telling us that they were going to f us. You know, fuck us. I don't know if we're allowed to say that or not. So sure, you know, it's YouTube. Know. We can say what yeah, we want. Yeah, it's YouTube. So, but yeah. So I think that um, in general they do that to kind of um, try to put the fear into you. But you, like you say, it can actually provide you with the opposite, just kind yeah. of fuel for the fire, and say like, all right, well, I'm going to fight some more now. So yeah. Well, so <laughs> I think this is definitely the most important time for people to get out on the streets and resist, mm -hmm. and to come up with real. Uh, the what will occupy should be viewed as a, I think it was very successful, mm -hmm. even though the the government created this like dialogue that we didn't know what we we're talking about, we didn't know why we were there. And well, it scared them, you know. Yeah, it was like, who are these right people? Out. Wait, we have to pay attention to them. Let's just say they have no message, you know. Right, but right. now they're all like, oh, but the people of Occupy, and you're just like, Please. yeah. Do you see Walmart is, sell <laughs> is now selling Occupy posters? Oh, jeez. Oh my God. Oh, no. Nobody right? buy an Occupy poster from, from Walmart. Walmart. Paint your own. Yeah, it's crazy. so. <laughs> so hey, Keith, on the topic of uh, things that that people can do to get involved themselves and just to kind of wind up this interview, could you give about like a one minute explanation of everything you need to know to run a Food Not Bombs chapter. <laughs> okay, yeah, the main thing, well, first of all, you want to go to foodnotbombs.net, and we have the seven steps to starting a Food Not Bombs, which gives you the idea 
Essentially, you're collecting food that can't be sold, you're making it into meals, you're going to the most visible part of your town at the time the most people possible are walking by, you're handing out this food with banners saying, food not bombs, and, you're try and you have literature and you're trying to encourage people to have a dialogue. So that's the basics of Food Not Bombs. And it, there's a book called Hungry for Peace on how, even more information on how to do Food Not Bombs. And Food Not Bombs is not like, is sort of, a, can be the, the hub of all the other actions that you're doing, like homes not jails, housing takeovers, Food Not Lawns, gardening, um, any kind of action that you're doing. And like things like long-term actions like Occupy, like if you're blocking a, uh, uh, you know, oil shipments or coal shipments or taking over, uh, uh, you know, abandoned buildings and things like that. Anything you're doing, the Food Not Bombs can be the hub where people come to that meal, they know they can maintain their food, uh, their ability to live because they got this free food, and, and they can resist. And so there's movements like Idle No More and all these things that are happening around the world that uh, depend upon regular access to food to be, sustain themselves and be out there um, on the front lines. And so food not bombs, you know, like Napoleon said, the army travels on its belly. <laughs> that is so important in this time where we need total global uprising. Which didn't work out well for Napoleon, by the no, way. No, no, just <laughs> not do this in water. He worked yeah. out well until the end. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's true, that's right. Right, right. And no. also, Final see, battle. he didn't have consensus, and he was not, he wasn't uh, hierarchical. And well, that supposedly stuff. they were all starving, but I mean, and then also another tidbit that my costuming teacher said that um, the women were supposed to wear see-through clothes because the population was so depleted, so whether or not that's true, I don't know, but that was kind of interesting. Was like, hmm. Oh, yeah, to try to increase sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's end it on that note. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the Bring show, Keith. Thanks. Yes. Yay. <laughs>